uh, one more time come with the power coming with the power and you can see the MOSFET is getting very very hot I mean the camera is seeing this MOSFET hot but actually it's not even warm so that's how sensitive it's a thermal camera hello so we are back but this time let's learn how we can uh, diagnose a faulty processor so what do we have here we have two boards yeah so actually i diagnose a board the customer bought another board and uh, you know when it's a faulty processor you can't really do anything so let's see how we can figure it out if it's a processor issue or not now in the beginning you will believe on the first you'll believe the laptop is not coming on but you are wrong so actually this board it is coming on but with no picture on the screen how this board died actually a, a mosfet blow up the mosfet was not here was here so i move it because uh, this processor has two v cores yeah but this one is the primary one the secondary when you when you use turbo when the processor goes on like a turbo mode that power rail it will comes up so i swap the mosfet just to see if the driver is still good and if the processor it will start working but actually not now three ways to test a processor okay this is a dell uh, inspiron 15 7 uh, 15 inch 755 uh, 7559 okay it's a nice uh, dell gaming laptop we have a processor a intel uh, sixth generation it's quite good even now okay so let's see first you can diagnose a processor with a multimeter that's the easiest way they're getting the multimeter home bridge now let's check the faulty one okay the faulty one we have the first v core you can see not sure if you can see sorry let me zoom it just to understand what's going on here so as you can see on the on the screen you can clearly spot you have two trucks big trucks this one and this one yeah two separate uh, v cores so this is the primary one yeah this is present from the moment you start the laptop and has three coils you can see three coils and the second one yeah which has no voltage till the moment actually the processor need more, more processing power is the second one now let's check the the resistance on the first uh, v core so the resistance to the ground is 0 0.9 ohms 0 0.8 you can see on the screen low now on the on the good board let's see on the good board ground here and we have 4.4 ohms a difference now the next one on the good one has 7.7 .7 ohms now on the bad one we have 5.5 ohms so uh, you can't really check just by this okay has uh, 5 ohms is faulty or not because each processor is different but if you check on this one this one was, was with the blow up mosfet i mean like 0 0.7 ohms it's a little bit too low i mean this should start questioning you know about uh, about the, the processor can bring some questions you know like i mean the resistance is too low now the next way to check a processor with the power supply we set up like 0 0.7 volts ground and we have plus and it's taking with 0 0.7 volts 1.3 amps yeah now on the good one this is the good one and it's taking like 0 0.8 so the current is lower but the best way to check uh, a processor is with a thermal camera thermal camera and with a power supply and i will show you why a healthy processor 
it will always hit uniform. Let me plug my uh, my thermal camera. Good. Now let me get the power supply. So this is the good board. This is the good one. So ground. We can get ground from anywhere. And plus, and we, sh we should pay attention on how the processor is sitting, on the heating signature from the processor. And you can see the processor on the thermal camera. Now I will come with the voltage. And you can see the processor is hitting like kind of uniform. I mean, the whole capsule should hit uniform, kind of, okay? It's like half. Now on the faulty one, let's get the faulty one. Uh, where is the processor? It's here. On the faulty one, you can see on, off, on, off. It's exactly on one spot. I can't zoom it more. Hmm. So one more time. On, off, on, off. You can clearly see the heat is coming from one spot, probably where are the where are sh shorted the transistors inside of the processor. So this processor is partial shorted. Yeah, it's not fully shorted. Remember one V core, which we have like five ohms, looks good. But with a thermal camera, you can clearly see the heat is coming like a burst from a single point. Okay, so that's how you check to find out if your processor is shorted. Now, I understand a thermal camera is expensive, and it's one other way. A really nice way to test if the processor is shorted. Let's go under the microscope. So what do we have to use? Let me take out the reflection. Good. You can use Zippo petrol. That's perfect for this kind of test. Okay. But if you don't have Zippo petrol, you can use alcohol. So try and rub the processor with your finger to be sure it's oily and now let's bring some alcohol that's fine now let's get the power supply and check on off on off so you can see the heat is from a single spot. On, off. On, off. On, off. Uh, yeah, I know the reflection from the from the light. On, off. You can see the heat is coming from the middle and it's spreading the, the alcohol on, off. Okay, so that's a easy way. So I, I mean, I have the thermal camera from about a few months, but from so long, I only use this method to identify a shorted processor. You know, I'm using the, the Zippo Petrol at work. I don't have here. But for this test, uh, for this test, uh, the Zippo petrol is a lot better compared with alcohol, just because it's sliding more over the processor. Yeah, it's oily. Okay. Usually, when you have a when you have a blow up, blow up MOSFET, you always should ask, you know, what about my processor? My processor is still alive. 
That's why, you know, a thermal camera, a power supply just to check is coming handy. Now I'll put back the good board onto the laptop and test it. Okay, so the board, it's inside of the laptop. Of course, the board, the, the new board, what the customer bought it. Let's power up. We have here the power button. Yeah, and we have pictures and the laptop is working fine. Okay, so uh, this is just a short video about, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you can't fix everything. And sometimes we just have to stop, like how we, how we said, you know, about the, our limitation. You can't really replace the processor. So if, if you find it, actually, it's a very hard job to replace the processor uh, i even had to say no today on a chipset replacement just because you know you, you need better tools and you need a little bit of experience replacing big chips okay so i'll stop now this is just uh, you know a short video i will say uh, thank you for watching like and subscribe if you like the video like always and uh, see you on the next one this time we have a happy customer. Bye.